Hey guys, it's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got here is the Zeiss Tauet 50mm f2.8 macro lens. Now, this is an extremely high quality lens. It goes for approximately $1,000 US, which is a decent amount of money for sure, but you're getting top quality build, top quality optics, and you know just that killer Zeiss look. And uh, this is actually made by Zeiss, so it's not a Sony lens with like a Zeiss badge. This is actually a Zeiss lens. So I'm using this lens on the Sony a6500 because it is a APS-C lens, okay? So it's specifically made for the crop factor Sony cameras. So that means the a6500, the a6300, a6000, Sony Nex6, Sony a5000, you know, Nex5N, all those crop factor cameras, and hopefully the new Sony A7000 or whatever they're gonna call it when uh, that is finally announced. So the 50 millimeter works out to an effective 75 millimeter when you factor in the crop factor because it's you know 50 times 1.5 and then that gives you an effective 75 millimeter. So that's quite a good focal length for macro photography because you have to get very close to your subjects when you're at one-to-one -one magnification, which is what this lens does. It does one-to-one -one magnification. That basically means that the subject that you're shooting whatever size that subject is, is going to appear that exact size to the sensor. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. That's what that means. And you'll see that with a lot of macro lenses in like the feature set. It'll be like one-to-one -one macro abilities. So that's what that means, just so you know, in case you're unaware. The minimum focus distance is six inches. So you will be fairly close to your subject when at one-to-one -one macro range. But still, you have enough room in front of the lens where you know, you're know you not on top of the subject where you're blocking all ambient light. Some other macro lenses, like the 30 millimeter macro lens, for example, you have to be so close to your subject that you pretty much cause a shadow. So it's better when you're a little bit further away, in my opinion, especially when you're doing like insects or flies or anything like that. You don't want them to fly away on you. So the, the further away you can be, the better. A floating lens system provides uniform length and sharpness throughout the focus range. However, the focus is kind of slow on this lens. It, it just, it, I wouldn't recommend it for tracking moving subjects, as you'll see in the video footage. You can see the focus is just a little bit slower than a lot of the other E-mount lenses, so tracking moving subjects wouldn't be the best for this lens. And same thing with video. It's not really the greatest for video because the focus is kind of noisy and it also is kind of slow to react. The optical design includes 14 elements and 11 groups. Within those elements, it has two spherical lens elements and two anomalous partial dispersion lens elements, which really helps with chromatic aberrations and things like that. This lens also has the Zeiss T-Star anti-reflective lens coating, and that makes a huge difference when it comes to glare, uh, lens flare control, and things like that. And it is one of the best lens coatings out there, in my opinion. It's one of the things that gives the Zeiss lenses that look. So the lens aperture diaphragm has nine blades, which, you know, the more blades there are, the more round the bokeh balls will look. So it also results in a super buttery, out of focus area, as you will see in the test photos. The lens construction itself is really clean, as you can see. It's a nice all black design. It's a metal lens barrel, metal lens bayonet, a lot of metal construction in this lens. So it feels really rigid and, and you know, just solid feeling. The focus ring itself is made out of this rubber material. So it's extremely easy to grab and it's buttery smooth when you turn it. However, it does tend to attract some dust. The lens hood itself is very well designed, and it, it, like I said, when it's mounted, it offers this nice clean look um, either way. When you mount it this way, it looks really cool too. You know, it just fits nice, and it has that nice, just sleek look to it, okay? The lens cap on the front is a pinch style, so it's very easy to get on and off, like so. The front lens here has a 52 millimeter filter thread, okay? If you wanna put filters on there or any kind of adapters for a ring flash, things like that, it's 52 millimeter. So this lens just screams high quality when you hold it. I mean, it, it just feels like a little brick in the hands. It's just extremely well made. And when you mount it, even like the way it clicks, it's got like a blue dot here for the E-mount. Normally that's white, but on this Zeiss lens, it's blue. And when you mount it, 
it just, I mean, it just clicks so perfectly. Like the tolerances are absolutely perfect. And uh, you notice that even though the lens is made of mostly metal and it's extremely well built, it still only weighs in at like 10 ounces approximately or 290 grams. So it's fairly lightweight and it's also very compact when you look at it, you know, on a camera like this. You know, there's other macro lenses out there, but they are a lot bigger in general when compared to this lens. You know, you have the full frame 90 millimeter f2.8 macro lens the G lens, which is optimized or designed for the full frame Sony E-mount cameras, that's also a fantastic option. But the lens is gigantic compared to this and way heavier, all right? So for a crop factor camera, this is an ideal option. Now the 50 millimeter range, which works out to like an effective 75 millimeter, is also great for portrait work, okay? You could also use it for landscapes, still life photography, and things like that. This lens is not just for macro photography, although it shot, it's clearly you know optimized for that, but you can use it for many other things as you'll see in the sample photos I took, okay? So don't think you're just limited to macro with this. It's an excellent 50 millimeter lens for many uses. All right guys, so here we are in Lightroom. I got a ton of photos to go over because I really wanna show you what this lens is capable of. So bear with me, it's gonna be a little bit longer than normal, but it's I think it's worth it, okay? So let's check this out. And on the top left, you will see the EXIF data. So you'll see what the camera was set to in case you're wondering about shutter speeds and ISO. I was using a tripod for a lot of these photos, just so you're aware. All right, so anyway, this is just a roll of string. So this roll of string is about the size of a soda can, and this is what it looks like on the side. It's a wax string, okay? And you can see the detail is just ridiculous. Now here's another shot. This was also taken at F4, and you can see just how narrow the depth of field is in the area on the string here, okay? And notice the background out of focus area is just like dreamy and looks awesome. And here's a picture outside on the, I took this on the way home from work and it's one of those metal sculptures and you can just see the absolute killer sharpness, clarity, color. These are raw files straight off the camera. I didn't do anything to these files, okay? And this is what you get from a killer lens, all right? It looks like the photo was adjusted. It looks like the contrast and the sharpness and the clarity, vibrance. It looks like all those things were jacked up a little bit, but they were not. This is straight off the camera, all right? And look at the background out of focus area. You see how it's just not that creamy smooth? It actually has that little bit of character to it as well. Um, that's like unique, all right? It, it just gives it that special look. So I really wanted to talk about that in a little more detail. And then again, now 50 millimeters zoomed out. Now I just brought the camera really close to the guitar player's hands here. And you can see, you can get so close with the macro lens, you can get killer shots like this as well. Now here's just a pencil, all right? So you can see the detail of the pencil wood and again, it's just absolutely remarkable what you can do with a macro lens. Now, here's the eraser, and I took two shots. I took this one at f2.8, and I took this one at f4. So you could see how more detail is gained. You know, by the f4, you can see the depth of field is getting a little bit deeper, and that's because I changed the aperture from f2.8 to f4. Now, this is just a knife blade, and I focused in the middle of the blade, so you can see how the depth of field falls off and what it does to the subject that you're taking a photo of because obviously the blade is flat you know and here's another shot just taking a photo at the tip of the blade as opposed to the middle of the blade some of you might be familiar with what this is it's a grasshopper fuse so it's about you know a little bit bigger than the my thumbnail you know in size it's like you know half an inch by half an inch approximately and you can see just what kind of detail you can get on such a small object you know pretty cool these are just some lights. I just wanted to show you the depth of field. This is just a, a spool of wire and it kind of created this abstract. And this is just a vent on the top of a piece of equipment. And I thought it made like a cool abstract, you know, cascading pattern effect. And again, these are all unedited. This is my friend's truck's headlight. And you know how headlights have those weird like mini lenses in it? That's what all this is. And it, again, it makes like a cool abstract type image. This is just like a cherry that fell off a cherry tree. It's like starting to rot but you could see just the remarkable detail again color clarity the way that the background renders is just phenomenal on the toet series lenses and this was like some kind of moth slash butterfly i'm not exactly sure what it was but you could again you can see just the clarity is really good i actually cropped in on this one a little bit and this is just some random like weeds at the basher kill i took a bunch of photos here's a few more this is the top of a piece of wood 
and you can see just it it's amazing it just looks unbelievable in my opinion and this is just a landscape angle just a snapshot and this was at the minimum focus distance this weed was really small and it's one of those it looks like fuzzy when you're looking at it with the human eye but when you zoom in and with a lens like this it almost looks like you know a tree branch or something but again the clarity and detail is absolutely unbelievable on this lens and you can see a little spider web that's been working on it and here's just another angle of the same thing here's just another little like weed but it looks like almost like an amazing flower at this minimum focus distance and this is just a vertical landscape image here oh this is my friend mark and i wanted to show you just the incredible detail on his beard and also the background you know out of focus area this is just using window light there's no you know no special flash or anything like that just window light now here's just a water bottle i got really close to the water bottle and it had some bubbles in it and it creates this cool like abstract and just another angle of the water bottle this is actually my computer screen monitor so you can see the individual pixels on the monitor which is pretty remarkable these are just some pins that we wire wires to some more lights this one's at f2.8 so you can see how the bouquet balls render as the distance you know this is just a wire a power wire and you can see just the incredible detail on this copper that's been cut and this particular shot was at f2.8 and i wanted to compare it to the f8 okay so this is f8 and notice you can see the wire spool detail behind it starting to come in at f8 but at f2.8 you can't tell it's just like red and notice also the vignette at f2.8 you can see the corners do darken a little bit when wide open which is just how all lenses work but you notice at f8 it's more even as far as the vignette goes okay here's another chopped wire this is a heavier gauge wire this is at f2.8 now i just wanted to show you a zoomed away version of this circuit board i took a picture of and now i'm going to get much closer and show you more detail okay and look at how close you can get all right so this is this is about a, a you know a foot and a half away like the minimum focus distance you can get these types of shots all right it's amazing and then i turned the board at an angle just to show you how the the depth of field renders and it just has that like magical rendering now this is just a pen point i wanted to show you what it looked like focusing on the tip of a pen a ballpoint pen and at f4 and then this is at f8 okay so you could see that depth of field difference is just amazing. And again, this is just some wires. I wanted to show you how the colors, it's like a maze of wires. And I wanted to show you what the madness looked like in the background and the foreground. This was a good test. So this particular shot was at F8, which I actually think looks the best. But then if you stop it down to F4, you can see the background starts to butter out and you can't really tell what it is. And then F2.8, it butters out even more. All right, but notice that F8 has like a little bit more character to it. You know, it's a little bit more fun of an image, in my opinion, you know, again, all subjective, but I just wanted to show you that. And this is just a blue spruce pine tree. Now this is just a flower. It actually looks like I added color to this, but I didn't. And you can see, I just focused on the tips of the flower petals and it just looks so dreamy. And I actually caught a fly on one of the flowers and you can see the detail is really good. This would look a little bit better if I was stopped down to like F8 or so, the fly would have much more detail. As it is here, the depth of field is so narrow, only parts of the fly are sharp, okay? And here's another fly that I caught, and you can see the top here is extremely sharp, but the, fly, the rest of the fly, you know, is out of focus because of the depth of field, all right? Again, this would have benefited from an F8 type aperture range the fl more of the fly would have been in focus okay i actually had this lens years ago and i took a bunch of pictures with the sony nex 6 so i just wanted to show you a few more photos with that it's a lower resolution older camera but as you can see the results are still quite good and the exif data is in the top left took a picture of bones jones he actually just coincidentally is barking what are the chances here's another one these are the raw files are straight off the camera i'll let you know if they're edited Here's another raw file looking into a flower, and you can see the detail is remarkable. The Next 6 is a lower resolution camera, so it doesn't have quite the same resolution as the, you know, 24 megapixel A6500, but still remarkable images, just a little inchworm there. And you could see this one's actually edited. You could see the contrast and clarity is absolutely ridiculous. And here's a picture of a spider on the end of a stick. And you can see how many eyes it has, and just the detail is absolutely remarkable. It's actually taken at F5. And here's another one. I actually cropped this one in. This is an edited file. 
So this is the full resolution right here because I cropped it in. ISO 800. And here's just a few more shots. I had I wanted to show you this one because of the background window. I wanted to show you how that super high contrast scene renders. And you can see this lens handles it extremely well because it's top quality Zeiss optics. Now here's just a fly on the end of a plate. And you can see the detail there is also quite good. And you can see here the, the little uh, sap like buildup, pollen buildup on there. It looks like some kind of liquid on the edge of the flower. It's quite amazing. Macro lenses are awesome. This is like a lemon bar. And this is just water droplets, you know, sweat on a glass. Now this is just the lens in the lab totally out of focus. I actually focused it all the way out to make the bouquet balls as large as possible. And this is what it looked like rendered. This was actually Christmas lights. Okay, so in the lab, I was shooting raw again, all right? So raw quality and no adjustments were made, nothing, okay? So I can show you what the distortion looks like quick by enabling the lens profile, and that'll also show you the vignette fall off, okay? It'll try to correct for that. So if I turn it on and off, at f2.8, you're gonna notice the vignette more. You could see how it's a little bit darker here on the corner, and uh, when I enable it, that kind of goes away. But you can see there's very little distortion, not really much to worry about, all right? So let me just get rid of that. So again, none of these images have any lens corrections enabled. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. All right, so here at f2.8, I just focused on that quarter there to show you how the background renders. And so you can see how the lights in the background render. And of course, it's like razor blade sharp if I zoom in on this quarter. And then here, I focused on the lab scene itself, so now you can see what the quarter looks like out of focus in the foreground. And I'll just move along. This was at f2.8. This is at f4. So you can see f2.8 versus f4. And then here's f5.6. And uh, I'll just zoom in quick so you can see the detail on the dollar. And even at f2.8, you can see the sharpness is just remarkable. Now the contrast as you stop down, does get a little bit better. You can see here at f4, it's just a little bit more punchy. And at f5.6, it's just a little bit, a little bit better in that regard. But even wide open at f2.8, it looks excellent in my opinion, okay? So every lens has a sweet spot. So you will notice a little bit improvement when you get to f4, f5.6. Now here, I'm closer to the minimum focus distance, but not quite. I'm about a foot away from this quarter, okay? So I could get about six inches closer, as you'll see in a second, but I wanted to show you what the lab scene looks like rendered at this distance, okay? So here's f2.8 and here's f8, all right? So I took a bunch of other photos just for fun to show you what can be done like in a lab scene environment with lighting and whatnot. And I actually stacked a couple of coins and took a picture of the edge of the coins. And you can see here, it's just amazing, the detail. And here is just a full quarter, the back of a quarter. So you can see what that looks like. This one I actually did edit a little bit. So here is a raw file. This is at f2.8 and I did like a half and half. So you can see the background and then the quarter. And you can see the sharpness, detail, clarity is excellent, okay? But this is at the absolute minimum focus distance. So the depth of field is extremely narrow, all right? So you're gonna notice more detail show up in the quarter as I stop it down. So here's f4, all right? So here's f2.8 versus f4. And you can see that the sharpness of the quarter is starting to look better. And here's f8. This one I actually did edit a little bit, so I darkened this side of the scene just to make it a little more pleasing to the eye. So you can see here, here's F4 and here's F8 with, like I said, a slight edit. So I added contrast and I darkened this side a little bit, okay? So here's just the edge of a quarter. I just wanted to show you how the depth of field changes. Now this is at F8, okay? And this is F2.8. So you could see, you could see the actual quarter here at F8. When you go to F2.8, it just, it just butters out. So it's like, what are you even looking at? You could still tell it's the edge of something, probably a coin, but it's a little bit harder to tell, you know? And then here's F4. So that is about it for the photos, guys. All right, so I just wanted to go over a couple of pros and cons quick with this lens. As I already mentioned, the focus is a little bit slow. So that's definitely a negative, okay? This unfortunately does not have focus by wire. So when you turn the focus ring, when you're at like one-to-one -one magnification, when you're super close to something and you're trying to just fine tune the focus, it actually steps into like different focus positions, okay? So it's not like a constant, perfectly smooth focus rack uh, uh, transition. It actually makes little tiny steps. The other negative that I notice is this rubber, as cool as it is, 
looking and as easy as it is to turn, it definitely collects dust. So there's like little white dust specks on this focus ring. And if you're like one of those people that, you know, likes your stuff mint and clean and, you know, just perfect, you know, some people are like that, you know, very particular in that regard. You're not going to like this rubber on the lens because dust definitely sticks to it. Okay. It just is what it is. Functionality wise, it's fantastic though. I got to say, I really like it. So some of the pros of this lens, okay. The sharpness is remarkable. Razor blade sharp. The sweet spot seems to be in between F4 and F8. The contrast and the sharpness are just that much better. It's got just killer like micro contrast and co punchy color, okay? The, the background out of focus area just looks awesome. It's not just that smooth look. It actually has like character to it, okay? And it, it just it just has that like look, okay? You see in this in the photos, you know, that not all lenses are created equal. You can have a nice smooth out of focus area, but it doesn't necessarily look as good as some other lenses when it's, you know, out of focus. Just overall image quality on this lens is absolutely fantastic, okay? And the build quality, again, just remarkable. All right, guys, at the end of the day, the Zeiss Tauet 50mm f2.8 macro lens is a fantastic lens. Highly recommend it. This is the lens I would buy if I wanted a macro lens for my next six, which I'm currently recording with, by the way. $1,000, definitely not cheap, but you are absolutely getting what you pay for with this lens, in my opinion. So that is about it for this review, guys. I really hope you got what you were looking for. Be sure to check out my other videos. I reviewed all the Tawit lenses, so those links for those lenses will be below. And, uh, you know, so check them out if you want to check out the other Tawit lenses. They make a killer ultra wide angle 12 millimeter. They also make a 32 millimeter, which is fantastic. Please let me know what you think in the comments section below. And also in the description area just below the video will be all the links if you want to make purchases, you know, on uh, BH Photo, all sorts of stuff other articles all the links are below in the description area and i really appreciate you checking that out and using those links okay if you're looking for a lens and you're in the market for the lens but you're not sure like what lens to get and you know you want to look at all the different prices and stuff like that and you, you want to see it in a nice and organized way well then i just happen to have the perfect thing for you check out my sony e-mount lens guide i have all the available lenses for the Sony e-mount camera system. They're very well organized. It's a great reference guide and I highly recommend you check that out, bookmark it. And also please, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. It helps let other people know that this is a quality review. And also if you're not subscribed, check out that subscribe button, click that notification icon. And uh, you know, I really hope you guys have a great day. So again, thanks for watching my review and I will catch up with you next time. Take care.